Staff Sergeant Daniel Leovila Jr. And then I'm from Auburn, New Hampshire. Station on Marine Corps Base Hawaii, uh, also known as Kaneohe Bay with MWSS 174, which stands for Marine Wing Support Squadron 174. So talk to swell joint training environment, basically the Air National Guard. This year's a little bit different because we have active duty Air Force along with the reserve components, uh, emergency manager fields, which also kind of coincides with our Seaburn field in the Marine Corps. So it's kind of like a joint training environment where we both get to share knowledge from each MOS and uh, kind of find the gaps or maybe the same similar language that we're speaking. So if we're ever working together in the future, uh, we kind of bridge those gaps now. Just seeing them operate, they have like their own isms as well. And then you throw in the Marine Corps on top of that, we have our own isms. We're all the same general career field. And I think the way that the future's going, since we're all gonna be probably working at an expeditionary air base or air site or something along those lines, we'll have to cross paths. And if Seaburn's ever involved, we'll be able to speak to each other a lot more clearly, probably have a better understanding of what you know another service is saying when it comes to Seaburn. It's been amazing. They got really technical knowledge that I think the Marine Corps doesn't get often uh, due to funding. I think the Marine Corps is able to get our Marines to certain classes and uh, get that like follow-on school, uh, the follow-on knowledge. The, what I've noticed is the National Guard has a lot more access to those schools. So when we're actually working in that joint environment, they just seem to know the technical side of Seaburn a lot more. So first week, pretty much enhanced Seaburn knowledge. Dugway scientists come out, give all their classes for you know, recognition on lab equipment and how to actually identify the process and what's the best place to sample from. Uh, the second week, we kind of talk about it in the Marine Corps as basic skills training. Uh, if you like think about MCT or SOI, all the basic skills that a Marine should know, we'll go through and we'll teach that to the National Guard. So it kind of helps them build that tactical mindset, uh, resiliency, get a little tough because they're usually not working in the field at the extent that we are. So we kind of provide what that looks like. My perfect toxic soil would be all Seaburn uh, career fields with different uh, service branches, not just, you know, United States, but other countries. And then we'll be able to have that wealth of knowledge pulled together and then we can bounce ideas, bounce TTPs, bounce a, a plethora of knowledge on how to operate in a Seaburn environment with each other. The intent behind toxic soil was to build resiliency, toughness, and a tactical mindset. So. Along those things are the small unit leadership. So if you notice, like in the Marine Corps, we got you know, delegation down at the lowest level. So Lance Corporal is making big decisions. And I think the National Guard really sees that in our unit as a Seaburn platoon. I give the intent, Sergeant takes it, takes it, does what he does with it, and then it gets down to the lowest level and I got Lance Corporals out there making things happen. Final thoughts would be fly, fight, win.